So, you got everything under control? Joey, Joey, for the fifth time, I got everything covered, man. FAA reports, monthly bills, flight logs. Go on your date, have yourself a good time. That's why I'm here. All right. Okay, you know, I have to admit I had some doubts about this partnership thing at first, but it really is working out. Thanks, partner. Hey, no problem, partner. Ready to go? Yep. <laughs> Same deal as last week? Cash in advance? You got it. Good. Same deal as last week? Yep. Half cheese, half pepperoni. Phenomenon where you think of somebody and then the phone rings and it's them. Oh, yeah, right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, this morning I was thinking about my old friend Dolores, and guess who called? Your old friend Dolores. No, my old friend Betty. <laughs> <laughs> well, Faye, you must be psychic. Uh, do you know what I'm thinking right now? No. Oh, good. <laughs> Anyway, Betty called to find out if she could give out my phone number. It seems someone called her looking for Faye Schlob. I mean, he wouldn't say why I was calling, so she didn't give it to him. Wait a minute, wait a minute, Faye. Your maiden name was Schlob? <laughs> I'm not ashamed. I come from a long line of Schlobs. <laughs> In fact, there was a Schlob on the Mayflower. Mm, that's right, because at the first Thanksgiving, he was the pilgrim who kept saying, pull my finger. that I come from very humble, hard-working stock. Yeah, just a bunch of poor schlobs. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, Alex, you have to help me. Last night, I'm watching Gone with the Wind, uh, near the end of the movie. Rat is at the door. Uh, he looks back and he says, Frankly, Scarlet. And then suddenly, I lost the channel. What does he tell her? I don't give a damn. Sorry to have bothered you. No, no, no. That's the line. That's what Rhett said to Scarlett. Mm, sounds like you got a reception problem. Uh -huh. I know exactly what you need. I got a guy who can fix you up for 50 bucks. 50 dollars? Uh, that's a lot of money for me just to watch TV. Yeah, it's not like you don't have plenty of other things to do. Send him over. How about you, Lambert? Everything okay over at your house? I'd be glad to come over and give you whatever you need. Roy, if you ever set foot in my house, the only thing I'll need is an alibi. <laughs> well, this is turning out to be quite a day. I just got a phone call from another old friend. Seems someone called looking for Faye Dumbly. Uh, I'm sorry, Faye Dumbly? Uh, it was my first husband's last name. You married a man named Dumbly and took his name? <laughs> Don't forget, she was a schlob. <laughs> That's not a very nice thing to say. I mean, who among us hasn't stood at a salad bar and missed the sneeze guard? That's the second call I've gotten today about somebody looking for me. You don't think I should be afraid, do you? Ah, uh, hey. Remember the immortal words of Franklin Roosevelt. You have nothing to fear but fear itself. Thank you, Lowell. Then a crazed loony coming after you hell bent on revenge. <laughs> well, good luck with it. Good morning, ladies. Hey. Good morning. You seem happy today. Oh, you bet I am. Last night I got my antenna adjusted. <laughs> I've never quite heard it phrased that way, but congratulations. Uh, no, no, no. I just mean, Roy's a friend. He fixed my, my TV reception. Ah. Not only did he make the picture clear, but suddenly it's picking up channels it never got before. I just got done watching a Farsi cooking show. Antonio, don't you get it? I mean, Roy's guy obviously hooked you into somebody else's cable. That's illegal. Yep. Ah, oh, I don't believe it. No, even Roy would not do something like that. Hey, Scarpaccio, here my friend paid you a visit. Yeah. Where's my envelope? Well, he, he did ask me to, to give you this. <laughs> hey, you mean 
No. I got you 120 channels out of the goodness of my heart. <laughs> I'm sorry I'm late. I'm a little upset. What, what's the matter? Well, I got another strange phone call last night. This one was from my old neighbor in Manhattan. It seems somebody showed up at her door asking about a Faye DeVay. <laughs> DeVay? Your name was DeVay? You're kidding. No, it was my second husband George's last name. Well, after Schlob and Dumbly, that's DeVay I'd have gone. <laughs> Start. I've heard them all. Show me DeVay. Uh, do you go all DeVay? <laughs> and my personal favorite, old soldiers never die, they just fade away. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's all very amusing, but uh, I'd appreciate it if you take this a little more seriously. I was up all night worrying about it. Ah, uh, look, we're sorry. Come on, we'll get you something to calm you down. Hey, Helen, Faye needs a cup of tea. You know DeVay, she likes it. <laughs> What's going on? Oh, well, Faye uh, got another call about someone tracking her down. But that doesn't mean there's anything to worry about. Yeah, it really doesn't. I mean, just because someone's looking for you, it could be anything. Maybe, maybe you opened a bank account a long time ago and forgot about it. That's right. Or, or maybe somebody died and left you a big inheritance. Yeah. Huh. Maybe a long-lost child that you put up for adoption uh, is looking for her birth mother. <laughs> if I gave birth to a child, I think I'd know it. Uh, not necessarily. <laughs> Adoption agencies are very tight with that information. I'll go get you that tea. Well, I, I just can't help feeling that someone out there is stalking me. Hey, Brian and I are not going to let anything happen to you. You're like family. Absolutely. And just keep that in mind in case it does turn out to be an inheritance. Okay? <laughs> Sandpiper Air, how can I help you? Hey, Joe, this is Helen. See that guy standing over at the air mask counter? He's been snooping around asking everybody if they know Faye. Thanks. Faye, you see that guy over there? He may be the one who's looking for you. Now, why don't you slip out the back? We'll keep him talking and stall him. Excuse me. I'm looking for uh, Faye Evelyn Schlob Dumbly DeVay Cochran. <laughs> I don't know. That's a pretty common name. <laughs> I'm a private investigator. I was hired to find a Miss Faye Cochran. I was told that she uh, works for Sandpiper. Well, why are you looking for her? I'm not at liberty to answer that. Who hired you? I'm not at liberty to answer that. What's your name? Or are you not at liberty to answer that? <laughs> Bob. <laughs> so, Bob, you're a private investigator, huh? Private eye, a gumshoe. Seamus. Don't tell me you live above a bar that has a neon sign that constantly flashes the word eats. And everywhere you go, you hear the sounds of a mournful sax. Yeah, and your girlfriend's a hooker with a heart of gold. <laughs> Look, I live in a condo in Paramus. I only listen to classical music, and my girlfriend's not a hooker. She's a massage therapist. Uh, Helen, uh, I'd like you to meet Bob. He's a PI who's... Trying to find out if we know someone named, uh, what was that name again? Faye Evelyn Schlob Dumbly DeVay Cochran. Could you be a little more specific? Look, I really don't think we have anyone named, uh, Faye Cochran working here at Sandpaper. Well, what are you saying, Joe? You know Faye. <laughs> she's, there, she's about yay big, lives at 205 Elm Street, usually stands right behind this, uh, nameplate right here. All right, all right. I lied. I'm Faye. Something. Something. <laughs> Does something Cochran. According to my records, uh, Miss Cochran would be in her early 60s. I've had a lot of work done. <laughs> oh, it's all right, Helen. I'm Faye Cochran. I knew I knew her. Now, why are you looking for me? done anything? All I know is I was hired to find the former Faye Schlob from Syracuse. You don't have to tell him anything, Faye. Well, it's all right. I've got nothing to hide. Look, when I lived in Syracuse, I, I led a very ordinary life. I went to school. I helped my mom in the garden. I, I volunteered at the USO. I served sodas at Woolworths. <laughs> I'm a model citizen. Then as near as I can tell, you're the one he's looking for. We'll be in touch. Hey, 
Hey, Sid, where, where the hell you been? Hey, you lost two fares already. Yeah, I know. I, I, I just couldn't tear myself away from the cartoon and networks, a puppet named Scooby-Doo. Uh, you're still getting cable? I thought you were having it disconnected. Yeah, I am. I am. So, so, but I tell you, this cable TV is, is a truly wonderful. Uh, have you heard of this uh, shopping channel? Oh, man, don't tell me you bought any of that junk. Junk? Oh, I, I, look, look, I know the difference between junk and something of value. Like this, like this life-size porcelain squirrel, which will be arriving in about three to four weeks. Ooh, that'll go almost time for your MTV raps. Antonio, you're, you're talking like a cable junkie. Look, Antonio, listen to me. You may really have a problem here. I, I know it starts out small. You know, you start experimenting a little bit with CNN, then you move to the hard stuff, Nickelodeon. And then all of a sudden, it's 4 a.m., you're strung out watching that bald man spray paint his head. Uh, 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 are you saying I have a problem? <laughs> well, I don't. I can quit at any time. Brian, I think I was followed in from the parking lot. Oh, all right, don't worry about it. I'll check it out. Oh, sorry, oh. Faye. You, you dropped your mitten out in the parking lot. Tried to catch up with you, but you're harder to catch than a greased pig. <laughs> Want to know how I know? No! just so on edge ever since that investigator showed up yesterday. I mean, what, what can he want? And what have I done? Oh. How you doing, Faye? Oh, how do you think I'm doing? I'm a walking bullseye. <laughs> Faye's still upset, huh? Yeah. She still thinks she's being hunted down for something she did in her past. What reason would anybody have to harm Faye? I mean, she's the nicest, sweetest, cheeriest person in the world. There's three reasons right there. <laughs> I know it's ridiculous. I mean, Faye's never done anything bad. Me, on the other hand, I've done a lot of things I'm ashamed of. Well, I wish you'd done some of them when we were dating. <laughs> oh, that's right. We dated. There's another thing I'm ashamed of. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I've never done anything wrong in my life. Oh, come on. Just knowing you is number one, two, and three on my list. <laughs> I once shot a man in Reno just to watch him die. <laughs> Excuse me? All right, I didn't, but it sounds a little more interesting than I voted for Dukakis. Oh, come on. Who hasn't done something that they regret? Shoplifting a pack of gum? Yeah, that's true, Smoking right. in the school bathroom? Oh, you remember that? <laughs> Finding yourself in the Kuwaiti desert playing strip poker with a Bedouin chieftain. <laughs> hmm. Or, you know, something like that. My life is ruined. My world has crumbled into a black hole of meaningless despair. Coffee? And hey, what happened? They found my illegal hookup and disconnected my cable. They told me I have to pay a two hundred dollar fine. What if I what if I can't pay the fine? And I have to go to jail. You know what happens in jail? I'd only get the three major networks. Are you happy? Look what you've turned him into. Hey, I was just trying to do him a favor, all right? I'll, I'll take care of it. I'll take care of it. Look, uh, oh, Scarpacci, uh, I'm sorry about the way things turned out, huh? See ya. Roy, Roy, there is one thing. Uh, the cable company said... If, if I could tell them the name of the person who helped me get the illegal hookup, they would drop the fine. <laughs> and and, and what, what, what'd you say? I told them I wasn't sure I could remember who Mr. Big is. <laughs> Big is. Sounds a lot like begins. <laughs> no, it's all starting to come back to oh, me. All right. All right, I'll give you the money. Oh, keep your money. Just let me come to your house tonight and watch the finals of Buck Naked Line Dancing. <laughs> Deal. <laughs> ah! well, what's going on? 
So you tried to attack me with that bowling trophy. I, I was just trying to defend myself. I thought someone was coming after me with a gun. All right, Faye, calm down. I had no idea you were this upset about this whole situation. Why don't you come home with me and Brian tonight? Oh, no. I mean, this is just ridiculous. I can't spend the rest of my life jumping at every sound. I mean, look, I almost killed poor Lowell. You're right. I could have taken you easy. <laughs> no, um... You boys go on home. I'll be, I'll be able to manage by myself. You sure? Yeah, uh, absolutely sure. Okay, all right. I'm going to go. Brian's waiting for me. Okay. Good night. You know, Faye, you're absolutely right. This is no way to live your life. Just in case, I want you to have these. <laughs> what are those? Nunchucks. <laughs> Ancient Japanese instruments of death and mutilation. Oh, oh, oh. Use them in good health. To work with you every day? Oh, of course not. Only on Wednesdays. <laughs> Faye? Faye Schlub? Who are you? I'm the one that's been looking for you. <laughs> Don't you take another step. I'm, I'm warning you. I've got numbskulls here, and I know how to use them. Hey, we talked it over. We think you should come on with yes. us. No problem at all. Um, Joe, I know who's been stalking me. Who? Him. Who the hell are you? I've got something here that's going to settle this. Oh, look out. He's got a gun. Oh, no, no, no. It's just a picture. Well, 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 why are you waving that thing around for? <laughs> hey, who are these guys? Them? Oh, these are my two big, overprotective, strong sons who were just uh, recently released from prison. I once shot a man in Reno just to watch him die. <laughs> All right, well, look, would you just take a look at the picture? That'll explain everything. Well, it's pretty old and faded. Looks like you, Faye. <laughs> no, 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 let me look at that. Oh, that is me. It's funny how you can lock into a hairdo. <laughs> Who's that soldier you have your arm around? Well, that's me, Pete Nash. That was taken in uh, 1951. When we met. Well, I'm sorry, I don't remember you. Uh, and it still doesn't explain why you're here. Well, I suppose you could say it's because you owe me a dance. A dance? See? I knew there was a simple explanation. <laughs> well, the night before I shipped out to Korea, my uh, buddies and I, we went down to the USO in Syracuse. Oh, my girlfriends and I used to volunteer there when we danced with the soldiers. I know. I was one of them. I was just 19. I was scared to death of going to war. And you sat up with me all night talking. You told me not to worry that I'd come back. I said, how do you know that? And you said, you've got to come back. You owe me a dance. That's so sweet. <laughs> it certainly was. Well, all the time I was in Korea, I carried your picture with me. As a matter of fact, I told my buddies that you were my girl. Oh, wow. So carrying Faye's picture got you through the war? Oh, sure. That picture saved my life. It did? One day we were on a heavy artillery fire, and oh, I, was, I was so scared, and I took out your picture. You and mean I... just, just looking at my face gave you the courage to go on? No. <laughs> I took out your picture, and I dropped it. And I bent down to pick it up. And a bullet meant for you whizzed right over your head, huh? No, I bent down to pick it up. I slipped on my canteen, the rifle discharged, and I shot myself in the ass. <laughs> what kind of a medal did they give you for that? And where do they pin it? <laughs> well, there I was in this VA hospital, lying there with a bullet in my keister, and it reminded me of you, Faith. <laughs> I'm flattered. But you still don't remember who I am, do you? No, I'm sorry, I don't. Well, you see, I, I danced with a lot of boys. Well, let me give you a clue. I was a very bad dancer. Oh, well, most of the boys were. But I stepped on your toes. <laughs> a lot of the boys did. But I broke one. <gasps> My goodness, was that you? That was me. <laughs> so, uh, basically, your war story is you broke face toe and shot yourself in the ass. <laughs> Bet you keep the grandkids riveted with that. Uh, you know, boys, I, I think everything will be fine. Now, you can go home. Sure, sure. Yes, I'm sure. Okay. Well, 
It's nice to meet you. Right. Goodbye, Mommy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Pete, I'm curious. I mean, how come it took you so long to find me? Well, after the war, I tried to find you. I went back to Circus. But you'd moved. Well, eventually, I, I got married, and the, the years rolled by. Recently, my wife died. I was looking at some old pictures, and I came across that one of you and me, and I realized there were so many things I, I meant to do in my life that I hadn't done. And one of them was seeing you again and thanking you for helping me get through that war. So, fair. thank you. You're welcome. Well, I guess I'd better be going. Oh, wait. Um, I believe you still owe me a dance. Well, that's better. Well, I warn you, I'm still a bad dancer. Oh, that's okay. You just follow me. Sorry. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> Sorry. That's right. <laughs> 